With the increased incidence of active shooter attacks on civilian targets, first responders need every tool available to train, prepare, and minimize casualties. By training cross-discipline first responders before events happen, tactics can be honed, coordination across discipline is exercised, and lives can be saved. The following is an example of how the Department of Homeland Security First Responder Group is using virtual training technology that is leveraged from the Army to prepare this country's protectors to respond decisively, efficiently, and effectively against a wide range of threats. The need to train first responders in a combined training environment has been a noted area of need for a long time. The Department of Homeland Security's first responders group was tasked to find a way to bring this training to the field. They conducted research into existing functionality that could be leveraged for their training purposes. 
The great overlap of capabilities brought the EDGE team and the DHS teams together. The city of Sacramento was selected as the location for the pilot project, focusing the training on an active shooter scenario in a local hotel. Due to DHS leveraging the existing EDGE platform, the funding contributions from each party provided a multiplied benefit to both organizations' use cases. Existing frameworks and in-world assets such as vehicles, player characters, animations, props, and user interfaces are all areas where reuse from the existing scenarios was realized. The assets that were specific to the Sacramento scenario, like the accurate representation of the 26th floor hotel, complete with lobby and ballrooms, first responder equipment and uniforms, and the complex fire model, are all now available to future developers and scenarios within the EDGE platform. The partnership of the Army and DHS has proven to be beneficial to each organization's training and learning applications and will continue to feed future capabilities. The First Responder Sandbox Level Version 1.0 is the culmination of a 10-month development effort involving a team of more than six organizations from both industry and the government. The version 1.0 user trials took place over the week of November 18, 2013, in Sacramento, California. The trials consisted of over 40 different manned role players with over 50 artificial intelligence driven non-player characters filling the roles of hotel patrons and employees. The manned roles consisted of several different disciplines including law enforcement, firefighters, emergency medical personnel, dispatch, incident command, civilians, and the suspects themselves. The event included multiple runs of the scenario with the suspects using different tactics and strategies each time. The sandbox construct of this level allows for great flexibility in the types of dynamic events that can drive the scenarios while still remaining within the training doctrine framework. Throughout the multiple scenario run-throughs, the team capitalized on the flexibility of the FRS level and the EDGE platform to facilitate maximum training effectiveness. The initial event began with lower level suspect aggressiveness providing the trainees time to become familiar with the environment. Then, as the training audience showed increased skill, the complexity and threat grew throughout the subsequent scenario runs. This scaffolded training is only possible because of the flexibility of the training platform. The open-ended capability and flexibility of the EDGE platform demonstrated during this event can be extended to support a wide range of future capabilities. Some examples include wildland firefighting, response to attacks on schools, response to natural disasters to train coordination between local first responders and the National Guard, and threats to public transportation, both human and natural. Every training environment developed will be available to any government-sponsored group to improve the response to and survivability of threats to our nation with a wide range of deployment options. As a result of the feedback from that event, the FRS software was updated and version 1.1 was released in April of 2014.